one in heaven. Where, when you become a newborn, a born again Christian, in Christ Jesus, we're seated in heavenly places. We're citizens of heaven. Even though we're on earth, and heaven is our goal. The Bible said we recognize ourselves as children and strangers down here. In my teaching, I did a whole series, Time versus Eternity. But that's dealing with Heaven, that's something that's been taken out of the church and everything produced down here in time. Especially through the false prophets and their teaching. You get yours here now. Pave your streets of gold here now. God's going to wipe out what's here now. He's going to burn this whole earth up. As it says in 1 Peter 4, a conflagration is going to destroy everything. Earth and heat. God's going a new heaven and a new earth for us. So what are you going to base your Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. My word never passed away. So what are you going to base your faith on? What was God getting ready to destroy? And all the memories in it, and all the so-called glory of man should perish. After this manner, therefore, pray, our Father who art in heaven. That's where he resides. That's where our goal is to get to heaven. Hollow be thy name. Now the word hollow is from the word hagios. Holy, separating. Remember now, if you don't follow street, you do a lot of talking holiness. And to be wholly separated, to, to take, you, to, you were to take something that was of value to you and place, place it on the altar. To be totally consumed by fire, what that did, you know, to use it for whatever it wanted, to, to, to relinquish rights. And we're to be wholly separated unto God. God to use us as a living sacrifice because Christ paid for us with his blood and we're not only we bought and paid for the price. So we're to live under him that paid for it and died for it. And we're to be do loss, slave for God. Now you can be slave for Satan, the world, the flesh, the devil, or you can be a do loss for God. There's no freedom in a vacuum in the universe. You go from one side or the other. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell fire. David. After this manner, therefore, pray, ye our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name. So you put above everything. Thy kingdom come. We want heaven to come. We want Christ to come. Christ is coming one day. If you don't believe that, then you ain't a real Christian. That's what we believe in eternity. It's what Christ is coming from beyond history. The smack. And smash his fist into this earth and get him straight through an Armageddon and mash him like graves. Because the world's coming against Christ. The whole world governs, earth and governs, king. God smacking this world around right now. To get man's attention that he's the boss. We're living in biblical times right now. The beginnings of man's troubles and revelation. And God ain't let up yet. It's been going on for weeks now. Now they say the same thing for weeks. These are the best of times. These are the worst of times. These are biblical times. We're living biblical times right now. God ain't let up yet. He's done tilted the earth on his axis. You got hailstorms going on around the world in the middle of summer. <laughs> Watching Spain, the people were running, you know, giant golf balls, or actually orange size hail drops on their heads in, in the middle of summer. They was on the beach having a good time. All of a sudden, the storm came out of nowhere. So that's what's going on around the world. Uh, earthquakes popping off. It's a biblical time. Many, many earthquakes. And a lot of the world right now is facing the deluge the underwater. God's the boss. He's setting up everything for his end time harvest. To get man's attention. Got to break his pride down for him. And he's really going after certain nations that was 
affiliated with Swallow of the Innocence, if you know what I mean. They really catch me. And God's going to deal with this nation to eight years. After this manner, therefore, pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We want, we're looking for the kingdom of God, God to come in righteousness. That's what us Christians are looking for. Christ is our unseen master. Our Father, who art in heaven. We want to see our Father one day. We heard a lot about it. We'd like to go before his throne and say, what Christianity is about. So I can't wait. You shouldn't be either. This world is not our own. That's real Christianity. We're just a passing through. You've heard me to follow street priests uh, say for many years now. You use this world like you would the toilet paper and just dark. Same one. Can't take anything with you. Naked you come to the world naked, you share them. Don't fall in love with them. After this manner, therefore, pray, I follow the word in heaven. I will be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth and as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We got to eat every day. That's why I say this is a daily bread. Right? I would say go to the day, day, no day, today. Sufficient enough is your balance for evil. You're going to have a Satan coming after you every day, so focus day to day. Go to the now. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us, now, this is another thing. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Is the, is the earth following God's will or is it following Satan's will? No, Satan's called the, the God of this world. Read that in 2 Corinthians 4 4. This world is aligned with him and his justice. The men of the earth is going to line up against Christ and God the Father. God's going to take this earth by force. I serve the real Godfather. Ain't nobody more gangster than God. Call him the big G. <laughs> I side the mic. But he's going to take this earth back. Now what kind of Christian are you if you don't believe all what I'm saying right now? You one of them chinos? The Christians in the name Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. The debts as in sin. As we forgive our debtors. You gotta forgive the people to sin against you. I have. You gotta forgive you for your sins against me. We're gonna sin daily till we're out of here. Suppose you become a Christian. Don't mean you, you without sin. Just mean the Holy Spirit comes in here and helps you clean up, helps clean the house up and stuff from the inside out. That's all. We won't be, we won't be finished and complete till we're over here five or six. But the process begins here. Keep your connection to faith. Christ is formed in your heart by faith. You become more Christ-like. Then we'll get our heavenly bodies over there and this sinning carcass right here will fall off. And we'll be free of the gravity of sin that pulls us down. No, you're going to sin thought and deed till you're out of here. But the thing is, it's not the wall on the sin. That's why you know, get my teaching on sin. I'm going to tell the whole, I got a whole section on it. Uh, especially, get the, get the video, uh, the pendulum swings. From legalism to lawlessness. Like Satan can't have you lawless, do as I will. Anything goes, in Hollywood style. And they'll turn you into a Pharisee. And thou shalt die. Which produces hypocrisy. Give a teaching thou hypocrite. Do do this and do that, but it produces hypocrisy. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, and we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation. Now, how many raising hands heard God will never tempt you? That's the devil's role. Oh, really? Okay. Let's just see about that. Let's see. Let's see about that. Let's go to Genesis 22.1. This is just one verse here. The Genesis 22. Let's see if God is in the tempting business. Now, y'all that follow street priests already, I showed you. Did God have sent evil spirits to lie to people for them to believe a lie and go the wrong direction? God is God. Do what he wanted to. If you get on his bad side, anything goes with him. This is 22.1. Now, if you've heard it in the church, some of you have heard for you, God will never tempt you. That's Satan. It's Satan to tempt you. That like God would never do anything evil. The Bible says, God said in his Bible, I created evil. And he said many times I did evil unto him. Uh, or them. <laughs> Throughout the scripture, some people don't read their own Bibles. God being God can do what he wants to do with his creation. We are not to judge him. He judges us. And we don't necessarily follow by man's so-called rules of what he thinks God should be. He definitely goes against the grain there in this book. And it came to pass after these things that God, see that slowly, God did tempt Abraham he said that very slow. But a hard hearing. And for those that have the traditional mindsets on it, says God can't tempt you. Let's read it again. That God did tempt Abraham. Now if you don't understand that, and you're that naive, I, I can't help you. You need to turn the channel. <laughs> Nothing I can do for you. God can't tempt you. Told the told children of Israel. Uh, where is that verse? I think you can look it up for yourself. Deuteronomy 8 2. He said, I want you to do the wilderness to tempt you. To prove you. Same word. Prove, tempt, the same. And we'll see what was in your heart. Yes, sure, God, God can tempt you. Absolutely. But he says here, this is why I pray this prayer daily too. I don't want to be tempted by God. I don't want you to lead me into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. I pray this day, I suggest you do it too. I don't want to be led. Back in the morning. That's why he says to pray, so you don't be led. And I do. That's following your instructions. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Today. For thine is the kingdom and the power. God short off his power right now. I mean, he's got some cloud formations. Storms that ain't never been seen or signs in the heavens. He's going against the grain. I mean, giant sinkholes over there. He's going against the norm, the grain, what weather patterns should be for this season right here, summertime. God's doing it, showing off his power on the world stage right now. And the glory forever. Amen. All right, that was the Lord's Prayer. I hope you have a new, <laughs> some of you, <laughs> you have a whole new perception of what the Lord's Prayer is now. You got, I, <laughs> you never heard it like that, on that fashion before, they say, I ain't heard it on that fashion before. Yeah, that's what that's what, to, to, to wake you up the reality of what the, really, the Lord's Prayer really is. And you should be praying it there. And I just told you why. A lot of reasons. You know. Alright, if I'm the one that taught you, give, include your feet and pastors. Galatians 6.6 6. Most preachers will starve to death and you told them, give according to what I've taught you. If you've been following the street for some time, some, some months or years, you've been taught. And God sees you. I mean, not to see you. That's that verse is where God is not mocked. <laughs> he sees you. Including being the pastor. So, you know, praise the right. 
And the preachers are famous for that. And I give it credit from the source material that you're uh, stealing. Anyway, if I'm the one that taught you again, go to streetpriestministry.org, hit the donate button. I'm in the process of going back to snail mail, so I'm going to have an address for you in the future. I'm working on it. Uh, where you can send a snail mail because it's getting bad for us to even uh, take money to PayPal and all of them. They're, they're cutting us off, giving us problems. So um, we're going back to old school. They've been doing that totally anyway. Just write each other letters. But anyway, streetpriestministry.org, hit the donate button, see what happens. Ties, first fruit, alabaster box belong to the Lord. Good day, good evening, good night to you around the world. May you grow in faith in Christ Jesus, my name.